All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take one end and strip about, oh, three quarters of an inch to an inch of insulation off the end of it there. There we go. Now, you may be wondering uh, how I'm gonna solder all this um, to the rail because there's a lot of wire to try to solder. Well, the advantage of doing things the way I'm doing it, uh, running a heavy wire to the track, is if you use stranded wire, Okay, you can run the heaviest possible gauge you can up to the point of the solder and then all you do is you take some strands away like that. Take maybe about four or five strands, leave that much, twist those together, okay, like that. And this is what actually gets soldered to your track. So what you have essentially is you have a heavier gauge wire, the heaviest possible gauge, going up to your track. You take some strands away uh, to thin out the gauge, and this is what you actually solder on your track. So this way, um, I do this to the, uh, now things are kind of set up, space considerations. I can actually run a longer feeder length from the track to the terminal strip or, or to the actual bus itself depending on how you're doing. If you're using thinner gauge wire it's recommended that you probably run I think no longer than four or five inches from the track to your bus. So uh, this way it gives me a little bit more flexibility in uh, where I can actually position my terminal strip uh, just allows me gives me more breathing room to um, put things together because then I can pull the terminal strip a little bit out from underneath the layout or let it dangle underneath and have some room to breathe some room to work with so I'm not so uh, so I'm not in cramped quarters so that's the advantage of doing it that way and uh, I've done it elsewhere on the layout and have not had any issues with uh, voltage drop problems because of the length of the line. So this is a way of doing it. If it works for you, fine. Um, if you can think of a better way or you know want to go with the finer gauge wire then that's fine too. So uh, that's just my way of doing things. Your mileage may vary on how much you want to use this. So let me cut this short a little bit. Trim that down. Shorten that up. Go ahead and clean some of these straggler wires here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a little solder on the end, pin this to kind of tie the uh, tie all those strands together. Um, hold on. Yeah, great. Hold on a second. Okay, I have to find my solder. So, all right, let me go ahead, pull solder on there. Uh, tin it up, tie the wires together, and now I can go ahead and trim this a little shorter. Okay, now uh, let me go ahead, take the wire here, and feed it into the hole. That's a good size hole, so the wire goes down very nicely. Alright, now what I'm going to do is Put a little bend in this wire like that. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I've got it. You see it through the hole there. Just gonna put a little bend, a little 90 degree angle right there. Like that. See? See what I did in there? A little 90 degree angle. I'm gonna feed this, pull it down, reach underneath. Ah, see, I can't reach underneath. I don't have the room. So let me just keep pushing this down until it hooks on the top of the road bed. Now what I'm going to do is take a little blade and cajole this thing underneath the rail joiner. Like that. Okay. Oh, we getting there. There. There we go. It's now fed underneath the rail joiner at a 90 degree angle, like that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is solder the wire to the bottom of the rail joiner. Now what I've tried to do, uh, the way I've tried to handle my rail joiners is that I at least try to um, solder the rail joiners to one 
side of the track if I can't do both to get a good electrical connection. But uh, And when you're using DCC, you really do want to use a lot of feeders uh, from each section of track. The only time where I don't use a lot of feeders, if I have two three-foot sections of track that I can solder together, then I'll run a feeder on either end of that uh, almost six-foot section. So those are the situations where I won't use a lot of feeders, but uh, go ahead and touch a little solder there. And there we go. And again, since I'm soldering it to the bottom uh, of the uh, rail joiner here, I don't have the problem of uh, this fouling uh, interfering with the uh, flanges of the uh, wheels going over. And I can go ahead and touch this a little bit on this side here. So, there we go, just a little bit there. And uh, that's how I solder. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these and show you how I hook them into the terminal strip. So I'll be back when I'm done.